So, hello and welcome to one of my, I think, first Kerbal Space Program 2 videos. I'm gonna be showing you an easy way to build basically a supersonic aeroplane. So, we use those two intakes there, the shock cone and the other one. because the shock cone works well regardless of Mach number then we add obviously one methane fuel tank because we will be using a jet because jets are the easiest when flying in the atmosphere and then we will be using the Panther uh, jet engine and we will be setting it as default to afterburner mode this is because afterburner mode consumes more fuel to produce way more thrust yes so obviously some appropriately sized wings and we place them here and there and an appropriately sized stabilizer looking good obviously again for the tail and moving things about a bit And obviously next we will go for the ground. Now for supersonic planes, obviously the wing angle should be as small as possible in order to like cleave through the air a bit better. So we will be setting that quite narrow and lower the wingspan a tiny bit so to again reduce the drag it also reduces the lift but that's something you would uh, need to trade off I guess and as I'm doing this voiceover I've just realized that the back stabilizer ring is slightly slanted downward which I don't know what effect that would have but that's not really intentional oh so of course here I, I always tend to use medium wheels and then make the front wheel point forward and the back wheels point backwards so to have them more like far away from the center of mass so here I'm trying to see like whether the wheel angle is Okay, so here I decided to put two tiny fuel tanks on the sides just purely so I could fit the wheels on them to have a bit of a wider base and usually I uh, like to angle my back wheels out a bit in my head it feels more stable but I'm not sure if it actually is, maybe not that far, yes, Some around that angle. And usually, as a like precautionary measure, I like to put the small wheel right on the back. So as I'm taking off, there's less risk of me hitting the back of the aircraft on the runway. Now obviously for aerodynamics, I put some nose cones on the... Um, tiny fuel tanks so to speak and we're done yes that's pretty much our aircraft and some extra air intakes just uh, for more air intakes <laughs> and because uh, I think it looks cooler Yeah, now I'm just testing the center of mass, and here we go. As you can see, like we're already oh. Now here, this is where I forgot to turn off the friction for the front wheel. Yeah, it's a bit. 
I don't like this feature that they put in. So I, I find it a bit annoying that the like friction on the front wheel just makes your aircraft go crazy. But it's there, so you have to just deal with it and turn it off every time. So yeah, take two. As you can see with the Panther engine, when it's closed, the nozzle, uh, you can see like the shock diamonds, it has supersonic flow, it's producing more thrust. Okay, we take off. And we're almost at Mach 1 already, just as we take off the runway, which is 343 meters per second. And there we go, we're at Mach 1 already. Yeah, so yeah, easy. Already going faster than the speed of sound. Yeah, so basically here I'm just letting it uh, gain as much speed as possible just to uh, really see how f fast this thing can go. So here at 500, so keep in mind at about 686 meters per second we'll be going at Mach 2, which is coming fairly soon uh, almost yeah there we go we're at Mach 2 and then hypothetically Mach 3 would be at 1029 meters per second but we didn't quite get that high yeah this the SAS Whenever you're making like these micro adjustments, I would turn it off because it just goes crazy. Yeah, so we're at n what's that? Eight six two. Eight eighty four. Eight eighty five. which is like Mach 2.58 so yeah it's easy to uh, basically get a supersonic aeroplane that's fairly stable once you turn off the SAS of course but yeah w with the afterburner constantly running like this as you can see the uh, fuel efficiency is fairly uh, well bad right yeah so basically I think I'll speed ahead a bit from now on but yeah obviously when you have a plane like this trying to turn is a nightmare because like it's optimized to go in a straight line and really fast so uh, yeah like the wings they don't have much like strength to turn the aircraft around at either speed and then once you start to drop the uh, the speed it just like starts to fall so it's something uh, worth considering like I said it's not like a perfect aircraft design or anything it's just going really fast that's basically the goal of this just to uh, how do you say sort of scratch that itch of like getting a supersonic aeroplane in the game like well I will probably improve on this design eventually like this is just the first things that came to mind as you saw so uh, yeah like also I'm a very bad pilot so yeah this uh, yeah, even as you can see here, we're going at Mach almost at Mach one point something here, trying to head back to the runway. 
and obviously I missed the runway as we shall see eventually here we see the island coming up that's in front of the runway uh, where I usually do uh, missile strikes actually because yeah I've been working on also some uh, bomber planes Yes, yeah, so you can see we're Mach 1 point something here. The fuel is half empty. So obviously the aircraft starts to get lighter, the lower the fuel. And it, in principle you could reach higher Mach numbers, but uh, yeah, here I switched to cruise to maybe try and save some fuel and not necessarily attack the runway <laughs> at Mach almost 3 so yeah yeah here is where I figured out that turning off the SAS while making the micro adjustments is actually the way to go yeah and here I got uh, basically impatient <laughs> of waiting, so I decided to turn on the afterburner again. Yeah, I think this is where I messed up the perfect landing angle. Because then I overshot the runway, so I had to like do a, a, like, a figure 8 kind of maneuver to try and realign myself. And yeah, well, anyway, you'll see how good of a pilot I am when we see the landing, because it's amazing. Anyway, so I think I'll speed this up a bit. We're at four times speed, I believe. Yeah, this was almost like a good landing, but again, I overshot the runway. Especially here, I almost like crashed into Yeah, so now I turned on the afterburner again just to like make this figure eight thing go by a bit faster and I tried to reduce the throttle to like maybe turn a bit better. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a shit pilot so don't please uh, have a bit of patience. Okay, so now we're coming for landing. I'll uh, Go back to normal speed for the footage. So you know, considering my shitty skills, you'll see that wasn't <laughs> wasn't the worst possible type of landing. At least, like the Kerbal survived. <laughs> So here obviously we deploy the wheels, trying to come in slow and attack like the runway facing slightly up. To be honest I think I had a bit too much like thrust at 22% here, I think I could have gone lower yeah so touchdown time obviously I'm not straight along the runway which is uh, yeah it, it would be asking too much of my skills at that point so yeah we touch down but we bounce off to be honest I need to figure out like something I can turn off to get less bounce because it's a bit frustrating, here I try again, but I bounce off again, 
so I guess I'm counting that as a kind of success. Yeah, the Kerbal survived, so success on that regard. And yeah, at least I touched the runway, so not a complete nosedive. So, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video. I have some special designs coming up, actually. So, yeah, bye bye.